Don't eat that. I'm Paul. This is my wood shop, and I'm about to build a solar kiln with Bert and Ernie. I wanted to build the kiln on an insulated concrete slab just like my shop, but there was too much of a slope here, so I, I had to go with post and pile. So I hooked up the old post hole digger to the tractor and dug holes for six by sixes. I got all my six by sixes and I notched them all. And my idea was that I was going to measure to the bottom of the hole, get everything put together, squared, and level and then cement everything in place and that that didn't really work that well uh, it was a lot of messing around but it was still a lot easier than trying to notch everything when the posts were already vertical so I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out and it's pretty level and pretty square the goats weren't going to be much help so my friend Andy came by and gave me a hand and all I really had to do was buy them lunch every day, so it was a pretty good deal for me. After Ida passed, we got back to it. Uh, we insulated the floor with the two inch polystyrene sheets because they're uh, waterproof and I used every bit of insulation I had and then put the floor on. Just a quick update on the kiln. I think I'm about halfway done. I got my framing inspection done yesterday and good to go. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't bother getting a permit, but because I uh, live in an agricultural area and the value of the building is gonna be more than $1,000, uh, I have to get a permit. And that's why I also have to use stamped lumber, otherwise I'd use my own. This kiln is based on the Virginia Tech plans. And in 2005, the cost of their building was $1,866. And right now I'm about that same uh, price as it sits here. Uh, that includes all the pressure treated lumber, the insulation underneath the subfloor here, and uh, all the framing lumber. Come here. Yeah, who's a good little goat? Who's a good goat? Should be putting the siding on today.
When it came time to paint the interior, I went to uh, Sherwin Williams and asked them if a black latex paint would work, and they said no, it wouldn't hold up to the the temperatures; it would bubble off. So I did go with the Virginia Tech recommendation and got a rubberized roofing paint. And I got this one at Lowe's, and I chose this one specifically because I'm able to roll it on, although it went on much in a much lighter coat than I had hoped. So it did take several several coats to get it built up nice and thick. When I installed the baffle, I installed the whole thing on a hinge so that when I'm loading and unloading the timber, uh, I can just swing it up out of the way and avoid knocking my head on it constantly. I wanted to paint the exterior of the kiln black to help attract heat. Uh, that was until my wife found out about that and uh, I ended up painting it gray uh, to match my shop. But I think it still looks good. Finally, it was time to install the fans and the solar panels. I installed the fans into the baffle, ran the wires up to the top for the solar panels, got them installed. And then once I did that, I found out the fans ran the opposite way of what I thought they would. So it was easier just to unscrew them and put them on the other side of the baffle. Just had to finish up a little bit more painting and that was it. The kiln is complete except for a few little jobs. And the day after this, I was going to be loading it up with lumber. Morning. Kiln's complete, finally, and loaded with wood. Uh, I'm not going to show you the loading of it. Uh, that was awkward. Uh, I intend to get some forks for my tractor, but they didn't come in in time, so we had to do it out of the back of my truck, and it wasn't pretty. I'm happy with the kiln. The uh, completed cost of the kiln was $4,600. If I was to build a kiln again, I might change two things. Uh, one is the fans. They are currently hooked up directly to the solar panels. A better arrangement would be for the solar panels to be charging batteries hooked up to a thermostat which controls the fans. You don't necessarily want the fans to be running during daylight. You want it to be running when the, the kiln is at its hottest, which is going to lag behind daylight hours. Uh, today will be a good example. We're middle of October, but we are supposed to get into the 80s today. I've got a thermometer hygrometer hanging up inside the kiln. I've got one underneath uh, to compare temperatures. And I'll post the information at the end of the video, but you'll see that the temperature inside the kiln uh, is still good for drying even after the sun goes down. The second thing I would change is the width of the kiln. Uh, the Virginia Tech plans call for it to be 13.3 feet wide. Uh, I don't know why, that's just an inefficient use of sheet goods. Uh, if you're not using sheet goods, then it doesn't matter. Uh, but for me, right now I cut my logs at 10 foot before I mill them. Uh, so it works pretty good, but if I cut them down at 9 foot, it really wouldn't matter and my back would probably thank me for it later. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. 
If you have any questions, please post them down below. I'd be happy to answer anything I can. Um, and also subscribe to my channel. Uh, I plan on doing a lot of videos in the future of the kiln, my sawmill, and doing projects in my wood shop. So please follow along. Thanks for watching. And you can see here what I was talking about. It was a little foggy this morning. The sun finally broke through around noon and that's when the temperature in the kiln starts to take off. By four o'clock, it's 100 degrees in there, but that's also the time that the fans start slowing down because of the angle of the panels to the sun. And by six o'clock, they're stopped. So you still have a couple of hours there of good drying time. I know I could take care of this by just running a cord from my shop or electrical from my shop, but the idea of my solar kiln was to have it completely stand alone. So at some point, I'll probably switch to a battery backup system. Thanks again for watching.